So what does Medicare cover? Original Medicare has two parts. Part A is hospitalization. It's all about being admitted to a hospital. And then part B is everything else that Medicare covers that is not part A, things like uh, helping pay for doctor and outpatient care while part A primarily deals with an overnight or inpatient stay. Medi Medicare A covers hospital stays and inpatient care, including your hospital room and meals, care in special units like intensive care, prescription drugs and medical supplies while you're in the hospital using an inpatient stay, labs, tests, x-rays, medical equipment as an inpatient, operating room and recovery room services, skilled nursing services, some blood transfusions, hospice care, including medications to manage pain, part-time skilled care for the homebound after a qualified inpatient stay, and rehabilitation services after a qualified inpatient stay. Part A, hospitalization, fast facts. We have, it, it is premium free. You've completely earned that as long as you've worked 10 years or 40 quarters or your spouse has. You cannot be denied the coverage and the coverage is uh, nationwide. Any hospital or doctor that accepts uh, Medicare will, will uh, be covered under Part A. Coverage and costs are per benefit period. This is unique to um, Medicare. Most of us are accustomed to a calendar year deductible and a calendar year max out of pocket. In Medicare Part A, they, they um, are based on benefit periods and a benefit period begins on the first day you enter a hospital and ends after you've been out of the hospital or any other skilled care facility for 60 days in a row. Um, you must be admitted as an inpatient, not on an observation status. And Part A provides 60 lifetime reserve days after you use the first 90 days of um, coverage under Part A. Part B is going to extend to things like doctor visits, uh, including when you're in the hospital, an annual wellness visit and preventive services like flu shots. Clinical lab services, blood, urine tests, x-rays, MRIs, CAT scans, EKGs, uh, durable medical equipment, physical therapy at home, occupational speech therapy, all of the uh, skilled care at home indefinitely, diabetes screenings, education and certain supplies, mental health care, durable medical equipment for use at home like wheelchairs, walkers, canes, sleep apnea machines, beds, things of that nature are all part B. Uh, ambulatory surgical services and ambulance and emergency room services. They don't mention it here, but part B also covers uh, injectable drugs that have to be administered in a hospital or doctor's office. We're not talking about insulin that self-administer, but uh, for example, if you were taking chemotherapy or you were, had an autoimmune disorder and you needed to go in uh, for methotrexate, which helps suppress your immune system in that situation. Those are part B or injectable drugs and they're paid under the health side of the equation. We're gonna talk a little bit later about uh, part D prescription, but B, Baker, is injectables that have to be administered by a doctor. Part D is what you might pick up at the local pharmacy. So monthly premium is adjusted for income. Um, due to the success of, of your portfolio and, and the way the market's been going and all of the good advice you're receiving from Brophy Financial, some of you are paying what's called an income-related monthly adjustment amount. It's a higher Part B premium. Part B is typically $170.10, as long as your uh, modified adjusted gross income as a couple is below $192,000, or as a single person below $91,000. If you're above those thresholds, there's a kind of a sliding scale uh, where you're paying a significantly potentially higher uh, amount for Part B, as much as 
uh, $578 uh, versus the base of 170 uh, you can't be denied coverage for Part B. Coverage is, again, like Part A, nationwide, includes any provider that accepts Medicare. Premium penalty for late enrollment unless you qualify for a, a special election period. And Ken, I want to jump in for a moment, too. Um, one of the things that we do try to take into account when we do distributions for clients or other tax calculations is we do try to put a focus on also looking at the Medicare premium uh, thresholds for income. But we have, if this would be a conversation separately for anyone that's that's on the call that has found themselves in a higher income bracket, uh, is we have been able to, for a handful of clients, contest the higher IRMA because they had a one-time event. I uh, worked with a woman recently who had a, a large one-time alimony payment um, and her Medicare premium jumped and we were able to contest it and put it back down to where it should have been. Um, because she was no longer receiving that high income. <laughs> so uh, there's things, you know, just to jump in and say, if, if any of our clients are finding themselves in a higher Medicare premium, we can work together and see if that's the opportunity to lower it, or if that is something they'll have to continue to pay. I really appreciate you mentioning that, James, and it really uh, speaks to the quality and depth and breadth of your knowledge, because a lot of people don't know that. There's the form SSA 44 that permits you to submit and request a reduction based on certain life events that are anomalies. It might be a retirement or uh, some you know, large sum of money that hit one year and, and is not likely to repeat itself. Uh, so exactly, that, that is a possibility to avoid the IRMA by su submitting that form SSA 44. That's what James talking about. Uh, so original Medicare A and B does not cover all of the cost of your care. You have out-of-pocket expenses with no limit. One of the things that you want to be aware of is that there is no max out-of-pocket. There's, there's no cap on original Medicare A and B if you're just riding on that. So that can be a little bit frightening. Prescription drugs uh, are not covered under Part A and B. Routine dental vision or hearing, eyeglasses, contacts hearing aids, long-term or custodial care. That's uh, what we think of as nursing home care is not covered by Medicare. Excess charges for services by doctors who don't accept Medicare assignment uh, can be passed along to you up to 15%. Uh, care received outside the US is not covered uh, under original Medicare typically. So 